Hello everyone and welcome back to Zendik's Weather Channel. Today we're going to take a look at the longer range prospects as we look um, towards April. Now of course we have had the major sudden stratospheric warming, which I haven't talked about too much, but it has definitely happened now, um, which has reversed the zonal winds up in the stratosphere and we have to wait around two weeks for a response um, on our on our UK weather. Um, so we're going to have a look at all the data surrounding that. Um, we'll have a look at some longer range models such as the CFS. We'll have a look at the strap firstly, um, just to see. Um, <laughs> it's been absolutely obliterated and I'll show you why. Uh, and we've also got the ECMWF six week longer range forecast to show you as well as the AO and NEO. So if you enjoy all that content today, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. The videos will be coming uh, more regular, but I've just been sorting some things out. So, at the moment we can see there's some warming sat over the North Pole and over many parts of Western Europe in the stratosphere, many parts of Europe in the stratosphere. Now, as you can see, that, that warming, well, the warming's all, all, all together at the moment. No, that, was, that was a late chat. The warming's all together at the moment, though, and that is pushing towards the polar vortex and splits it, well, displaces it and splits it, completely obliterates it by the 20th of March. And um, that warming is maintained, um, which means that um and warmers warmings continue to occur uh, which basically just keeps the <laughs> keeps the polar vortex absolutely destroyed at its roots uh meaning that we don't really see a recovery um so the zonal winds remain negative until the end of <laughs> the end of the run which is um quite interesting now we're going to move over to the NAO forecast and the AO forecast, this is the Arctic and North Atlantic oscillations to see what trends there are for the end of the month. So this is where we currently are at the moment. We are around a slightly positive with the AO, which means is which is why we're seeing more of a more of a um, warmer flow um beginning to um, you know move in um soon <laughs> and then we're going to see atlantic conditions which is why it's positive however in the longer term there's a lot of uncertainty so we're looking between like the 25th and 26th of march at the end of this chart here maybe even up to the 29th as you can see there's a big split between my well between positive runs and negative runs suggesting the uncertainty whether we see blocking patterns develop or not it's the same similar situation with the neo where we see the positive runs, weekly positive runs, and weekly negative. So there's a big split. So, you know, it's a long way off. Things are to be ironed out. But I'll just have to wait and see how things develop. Now we'll bring up the CFS. Uh, this is an experimental model. Just to see if we can analyse any trends as we go into April. Um, now, end of March, start of April is when we're expecting a response from the Strat. But it is set to be negative for the whole month. Which means, uh, well, well, the zone of winds are expected to be negative. So weakened... Um, polar vortex so we're expecting and it powers down naturally through april into may as you know spring powers down spring the polar vortex powers down so we're expecting a um a big a big change in weather patterns and with the CFS, cfs it takes a while to get there but we do see high pressure builds to our north and west through the first week of april keeping it quite dry cold and frosty i'd say um, but could bring in it's, the winds coming in from the northeast it's probably pretty chilly under that not too bad by day, but cold nights possible. Then by the 11th, we see what we would consider maybe a tropospheric response, where we see high pressure moves out to our west, low pressures around um, Norway and Sweden, and we're bringing down a proper cold northerly wind. Whoops, properly cold northerly wind. Little troughs through on the 12th, and we're bringing the minus 10 line southwards. Look at that. Minus 10 for the south and east. That is a proper block for a few days there. They're bringing bitterly cold weather back in. Now, not bitterly cold, but... Five six degree temperatures by day, but pretty cold, frosty nights are possible. Um, before it does quickly get washed away by Atlantic driven air. So there's, the signs are definitely there. You see continued resurgences of northerly and northeasterly winds, but again, as we go through into May, it just becomes cold, wet rain, which is probably what this would be anyway. Even though we've got polar lows sinking southwards, it's probably still cold rain. Now, if we have a look at the ECMWF for the trends for the next couple of weeks as well. This is the mean sea level pressure anomalies. We'll have a look at this. We'll have a look at the 500 millibar heights and then the temperature anomalies as well as the precipitation after this. And I'll explain it all as we go along. So at the moment, which is the 17th to the 24th of March, we have high pressure just to our west in the, in the Atlantic. Low pressures just towards France and Spain. And we're bringing the wind from a not too bad east southeasterly wind. Meaning that, as you can see there, there's that trough just to our south, but we're under higher pressure for the north. So temperature anomalies coming out 1 to 3 degrees 
above average, um, but slightly cooler as you head northwards. And precipitation, dry for the north, slightly wetter in the south with that influence of low pressure. Now, if we look at week 2, the 24th to the 31st of March, we can see a slight change. High pressure ridges out in the Atlantic and low pressures over Scandinavia. And winds could be coming in from a chillier north northwesterly wind. Now, with that, there could be an Atlantic influence as the high pressure is not properly migrated towards Greenland or retrograde <laughs> towards Greenland. Uh, we could be seeing a westerly wind over the top of that or an Atlantic flow. But with the 500 millibar heights, which is slightly a, a slightly different view, this white area probably is lower pressure, um, and then the high pressure slightly further northwards, bringing in a northwesterly. So not as chilly with that one. Temperature anomalies are still one to three degrees above average, so maybe suggesting that Atlantic influence uh, with the precipitation, kind of a weak signal, but. Um, Driving average to our west, wetter than average to our east, suggesting the possibility of a block in the Atlantic. But again, all to be determined. Week 3 is the wrong chart. <laughs> Week 3 is the 31st of March, the 7th of April, and this suggests a tropospheric response. We have proper blocked conditions to our north and west, um, with high pressure going up towards Greenland, and for much of the northern hemisphere, um, low pressures towards France, Spain, and we're bringing in the wind from a north easterly or easterly direction. Now there's the 500 millibar heights, low pressure to the south, high pressures to our north, properly blocking, just high pressure everywhere. Winds are in from the east, and temperature anomalies are still above average slightly, but they are dipping. Um, again, don't take these temperature anomalies too seriously. The, this this run has been terrible all year, but we'll have to see if it verifies this time. Again, s s signs of driving average period of weather in um, that that time zone. So between the 7th and the 14th of April, that high pressure strengthens towards Greenland and Iceland, low pressures to again to our south, winds are in from a north easterly or easterly wind direction. This is looking like a pretty dismal April if you want mild weather. Um, there you can see the temperature anomalies are around average. Through much of Europe though, the temperature anomalies are <laughs> way above average, I'm not sure about that. Uh, but again, you can see the signal, weak signals because we're so far out, but driving average to the north and wetter than average to the south, so um, probably around average, to be fair. And then very extended time frame, week five and week six, lots of high pressure continuing to our north, suggesting that tropospheric response, um, which could increase blocking patterns. Um, temperature anomalies for week five and week six are just around average to slightly above so we'll have to wait and see how it plays out but i definitely see colder signals returning again um from those runs but again all this to be determined it is you know a long way off um and you don't always get a tropospheric response to a ssw uh but we'll just wait and see the weather will do what the weather will do won't it um if we have a look at the latest ecm run as well i thought this was quite interesting a polar low sinks southwards as high pressure ridges out in the atlantic to end the month that could be a tropospheric response, which the models may be picking up on. Bringing in the wind from a colder north northwesterly wind, northwesterly to northerly. Looks pretty chilly, but again, look at the time of year. The air masses are colder than average, but the the height anomalies are not too. No, the minus five lines are getting to Scotland, but not much further southwards, suggesting the time of year the pretty bitterly cold air masses are staying far north over Greenland high parts of Finland and Scandinavia and in the Northern Hemisphere, not over the UK. But yeah, all's to be determined. Thank you very much for tuning into today's video. Leave a like and subscribe if you found it informative, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye, everyone.